Thursday late yesterday Mo and Biff got sent home. Truthfully they seemed no more recovered than they did when they arrived but, what do I know? God damn it Jim, I'm a lunatic, not a doctor. Mo was replaced with Bubba. Now, I try to greet everyone who's new to the ward with a cheery hello and an offer of a coffee. The problem is that very often when people arrive they are sedated to the point of incoherence. After struggling to hold a conversation for a few minutes in heavily accented and heavily sedated German, I asked Bubba where he was from. Nigeria he said Lagos so I said is English better for you than German. Bubba smiled and nodded. This made things easier. His behavior was still a bit odd, but to be fair, we are both locked in a mental hospital for a reason. With all the comings and goings of guests here, the arrival of Bubba has given rise to an interesting situation. Now with Vincent, Kumpo, Parapa, Bubba, and me, we have hit critical mass. There are more people that like to speak English, than people that don't. What does this mean in reality? Not much really. Just two things one, we can be a truly bilingual ward. Part of communicating with people that speak the same collection of languages that you do, is you can be holding a conversation, mainly in one language, but then for each paragraph, sentence, or word, you can choose it from the language that best describes the emotion, feeling, or sentiment you are trying to express different languages have different strengths. Let me give you a simple example. In German there is a phrase ich habe lust auf, the direct translation is I have lust for and it is used in the sense of I have lust for a pizza, or, I have lust for a beer, or I have lust for a walk in the mountains. In English lust is only to do with sex. In German, you can have lust auf food, drink, or a walk, or anything else you want. It just, for me, better describes and represents the feeling of longing for something, than can be achieved with the English language. Two, more importantly, we can now use all the TV and radio channels freely. I only had one therapy today, it was make and do. I did the wet polish on all six pieces I have made with 400, 800, and 1200 grade sandpaper. Just need to finish them with the polishing paste and then they are done. On an unexpected side note, it brought my Tiffany ring out a treat. To borrow a line Rihanna, it shines bright like a diamond. I have just received fantastic news. I can go direct from the CDK to 90ER house. 90ER house is a long-term therapy facility, it's a 12-week stay. I was there in 2017, but didn't get the best out of it for two reasons. One, I felt I was being punished and sent into residential care against my will. I resented being there too, I really couldn't speak good enough German to understand and participate in everything that was happening. Normally you have to wait several months to get in, but they have reserved an acute bed for me. There are a lot of reasons I'm in repeatedly in mental health institutions which I will explain more clearly over the coming weeks, but the reason they have opened an acute bed for me is probably because that I have been writing and drawing pictures all over myself. Sadly not with a bureau, but with a carving knife. I have made a terrible mess of my arms, legs, torso and head. The scars appear permanent. I just need to speak with my doctor and therapist and then I can just walk to 90ER house. It's about 200 meters. I have a meeting with the doctors and therapist tomorrow morning. As I have a bit of time left today I will introduce one of the other new recruits, Hartnell. Hartnell is the oldest person on the ward. Doesn't seem too confused or sedated, but he and Bubba have the same strange delusion. They both think it's okay to smoke inside a hospital. Okay, so, I mean, firstly, it's 2020. Who the hell smokes indoors anywhere anymore? And secondly, and more importantly, it's not the 1800s. Who the hell thinks it's okay to smoke in a hospital? They both had to be told multiple times today not to smoke in the middle of the ward. Including, literally snatching cigarettes out their mouths as they try to spark up moments after being told no. Bubba also has delusions of grandeur, he thinks we, the other ward residents, are here to serve him and he never, ever, says please or thank you to anyone. Some classics lines, with the replies he received, from today included. While he is sitting next to the big metal box of food. Bring me my food. You can reach it from where you're sitting and 10 minutes later put my tray away, do it yourself, you are sitting next to the big metal box. Bring me coffee, 
The machine is just over there make this program go away, no, it's Compo's favorite I'm cold turn the heating on, it's not cold. Maybe if you put more clothes on than just a night shirt, like everyone else, you would be okay Friday woke at 3.30am to find Compo smoking out the window. It was literally 10 meters to the door, but no, too much effort for him. Another fool who thinks smoking inside a hospital ward is okay. It was just pure laziness and lack of respect for the rules and other residents. It's not as if Kumpo is confused or heavily sedated, he's sharp as a tack. It was just a, well I don't think I will get caught, so F the rules and basic common courtesy scenario. Smokers generally have no problems littering by just dropping butts on the ground, but in here many of them think smoking inside a hospital is perfectly reasonable. I despair sometimes. I have just spoken with the doctors, I can stay here and then go to 90ER house on Tuesday. This is an absolute result. I'm very happy. And to compound my happiness, I had my blood pressure taken. Now for my whole adult life I have had high blood pressure. Today I hit a 121 over 79. Which is basically perfect. Absolute perfection is 120 over 80, so 121 over 79 is probably the closest I will get in my life. I did my little happy dance by my bed after the nurse left. Bubba continued with his imperial demands today. We were all in the common room, a bit of Pink Floyd playing in the background, while Vincent treated us to a bit of story time as he read a chapter from a book he is reading. Genuinely a great way to spend 15 minutes as you wait for your lunch to heat up in the big metal box. Bubba decided that despite his bedroom being silent and available, he would come to the common room and demand silence there. Nobody even looked up as he started on his rant about wanting everyone to be quiet. He tried on three separate occasions to interrupt Vincent with his insane ramblings. Vincent kept reading, and each time Bubba spoke, Vincent got a little bit louder. Bubba then sat down at the table and started asking any everyone to bring him a coffee. Now, he had just walked past the coffee machine, he knows how it works, there is literally only one button to press, but he just sat there barking orders at people. No one pays the slightest bit of attention to his repeated attempts to be treated like royalty anymore. After 30 minutes of being ignored Bubba got up and went back to his bedroom. You really have to love the dynamics of a mental hospital. I think I will miss it slightly when I leave. For all the downsides to being locked in the CDK, there is a couple big pluses. Firstly and most importantly, unlimited access to toilet paper. There is no charming Eden in here. Secondly, because everyone in here has been COVID tested, we all know we are safe. The doctors and nurses wear masks as they have access to the outside, so technically they could bring it in, but Austria has really managed COVID extraordinarily well so it's unlikely, this means there is no need for other PPE. So when a large team of doctors in full COVID-19 PPE turned up yesterday and disappeared into a hidden room off the back of another locked room, eyebrows were raised more than a little. Shortly afterwards a new doctor, with more than a passing likeness to Dr. Fauci appeared on the ward and interviewed everyone. What this all means, I don't know, but maybe we learn